Welcome to the Money Watch Show. It's Thursday, November 7th. What's new? <laughs> Hardly anything anyway. Um, happy post-election. Uh, this is a program that is not talking about politics. It is talking about money. And if you've got a financial question, a money question, anything going on, then you can get in touch with us by going to jillonmoney.com, clicking the Contact Us button, and completing a form that comes to us as an email. If you would like to join us live, check the box. And Mark Talercio, my co-host and the master of all things Jill on Money, is going to help get you on the air. Mark, what percentage of people who write us want to come on the air live? Um, I would say 70% want to come on. Really? Mm-hmm. That's awesome. Yeah. That's so cool. Yeah, unfortunately, it's, you know, the the, the queue, the queue is very long. So, mm. uh, you know, it's, it's hard. It's hard. Oh, well, I apologize for everyone in advance, but we uh, love hearing from you and it is fun. To, and if there's like a big, huge deadline that looms, then, you know, maybe we'll pay attention to that. You know, sometimes Mark does push people up to the top of the line. Uh, all right, Mark, uh, what else is going on? It is now two months to the end of the year. Can you believe it? I know it's uh, here we are. We're into we're into November. Next thing on the horizon is Thanksgiving. Yeah, unbelievable. Also, by the way, the next thing on the horizon is that um, on our other podcast, Jill on Money, which is a separate podcast, um, we only have a, a few more weeks, uh. I should say, a group of weeks where we will be doing weekend shows. And this is really as a result of people saying to us. Why are you guys working seven days a week? This is insane. Now, of course, we don't work seven days a week. I mean, we do, but not on this show. This feels very grown up of us, Mark. It feels like it is time. We went from, we went to a daily show. I have the exact date. Do you want to know when? Uh, March, March 14th. 2020. 2020. So we are now coming into 21, 2, 3, yeah. So it's almost five years. The only reason we will do a weekend show is if something crazy crazy happens on a Friday and we have to put something in the feed. But other than that, Mark and I decided, Mark convinced me. I was very nervous about this that. Is, uh, this is step one of us easing into retirement. Oh, God, I can't wait. It's going to be wait. a long process, but this is the first step. Yeah. This is my retirement, not his. He can't retire. Uh, Mark's got 10 more years and he requests that if he has to work 10 more years that I have to work 10 more years. Um, You know, I was interested to kind of hear from a lot of people over the last group of weeks around, you know, their own retirement questions that have come in. And, And I think what's I think what's gaining currency is a lot of people realizing that they really need to have a process that is in in hand, you know, just stopping. I think that's pretty dangerous because I think people tend to make bad decisions when it's just like, whoop, all of a sudden. And I think that when when I think about retirement for myself or for my wife and I, that we're really being more thoughtful about how can we make a how can we make this be a process where it's not just this sudden thing. So I I encourage people to be thoughtful about this, not just like, oh, my God, I can't wait. We're done. And then nothing else happens after that. So let's have a game plan. Anyway, if you need some help with your game plan, just go to JillOnMoney.com and click the Contact Us button. Today, we are talking to Michael, who is on the line from the D.C. area. Michael, I was just in Washington, D.C. recently for a wedding, and it is quite a beautiful city. And amazingly, it used to have crap food. It's really good now. Like there's some really good dining options in DC. So well done, you guys in DC. I mean, DC, uh, it's, it is a place where whatever you are in the mood to get, you can find, you know, you can find a local place that has it. You want Chinese food, you want Afghan food, you want, you know, Mexican food. You can, you got you it. can find anything. I love it. So Michael, what brings you to us today? Uh, well, I'll start off with a uh, question that you probably don't receive very often, um, and that is, uh, are we putting too much money into retirement? Oh, I love this question. We we have, you know, it's funny. You're right. We don't get that question straight up. We often will get, am I saving too much? Um, and let, let's hear about what's going on, about the amount going into retirement, and who's the we in this yeah, so uh, my wife and I, so my wife's 37, I'm 40, um, we have three kids, 
Uh, currently, uh, my my wife makes about one hundred sixty thousand dollars a year, or one hundred sixty five thousand dollars a year. Okay. Um, she works for the federal government. Um, myself, uh, I make about ten thousand dollars a year working part time. Uh, I've been a stay at home dad uh, for a while, mm-hmm. um, and I am also uh, retired military, and. I retired out of the National Guard, uh, which means that um, I do not get a pension right away. Ooh, okay, yeah, sorry. That's okay. I wasn't full time, you know, uh, right. just in, in the Guard. Okay. Um, and so, yeah, so my part time job, uh, about $10,000 a year. Um, and then also from my time in the military, um, I do receive a pension from the VA uh, for disability. Um, and that is about $25,000 a year. Uh, for the rest of my life. Not taxable, right? That is correct. That is not taxable. Okay. Um, And one of the additional things with that is when each of our children uh, turn 18 years old and remain a dependent of ours, um, that uh, VA money will go up by $3,000 per year um, for each kid. Mm. All right. That's, That's a nice dependable extra chunk of money, right? It is. It is. Yeah. Um, it is a dependable money. It is dependable money. Um, you know, we know it's going to be there. Um, and so uh, because of you know our current situation uh, right now, after expenses, uh, we are able to save anywhere between twenty five hundred and twenty eight hundred dollars per month. Mm-hmm. That money currently is going just into a savings account um, that we're trying to build back up from having to uh, buy a a new furnace uh, earlier this year. Wait a second. Are you saying $2,500 to $2,800 a month after your wife contributes to retirement? Uh, Yes, that's correct. And what's she doing retirement-wise? What's she putting away? Uh, So retirement, so currently she contributes uh, $12,000 a year. Um, that all goes into the TSP Roth, great. Uh, which we just switched over uh, to last year. Um, and then she gets a match from the government of about $8,000 per year. And all of that goes into the regular TSP traditional. She will be entitled to a pension, right? Uh, she will. That's correct. Yep. So she's uh, about uh, 15 years into uh, the government job. Um, if she were to leave today, yeah. um, she'd be entitled to a pension of about twenty five thousand um, dollars. The more likely scenario is that uh, she'll do thirty years, so another fifteen years from now. Um, and assuming no pay raises, no promotion, no nothing for the next fifteen years, uh, her retirement. Uh, pension would be approximately $55,000 a month. I'm calling it 60. There's no way there's no raise or anything. You know what I mean? I would, I, no... I would agree. Yeah, yeah, we're you know on the conservative side of, of the numbers here. Okay, so what you're telling me is that in 15 years, right, you guys, you know, she's still young, right? Would she retire and do something else, you think? Or do you want to be able to do nothing in 15 years? I think the goal would be to do nothing. Really? Yeah. Okay. Tell me about these three kids. How old are they? Uh, so we had uh, 10, 7, and 4. And what about college for these kids? What are you thinking? Uh, so, well, so that, that's kind of the question. So we do not have a 529 plan mm-hmm. um, set up currently. Mm-hmm. Um, we do have you know money right now in a brokerage account. Um, so our uh, brokerage account uh, currently has about $130,000 in there. Mm-hmm. Um, for savings, uh, we have about $30,000 in cash. And then in our uh, combined TSP and uh, regular retirement accounts, uh, we have uh, about $690,000. Mm, and then great. all all total in our two Roths, uh, we have about $50,000. And then as I mentioned earlier, all of her contributions are currently going into there. Okay. So you guys, just so I understand from from like where you are in a cash flow basis, right? So she makes 165, you make 10, plus you have the 25 grand a year that is coming in through the pension, the VA pension, right? And then what you are are doing is she's putting 12,000 in her uh, thrift savings plan, the Roth, her, the government is putting 8,000 into the traditional TSP. And are you guys both also putting money into a Roth IRA? 
Uh, no, we are not currently. Okay, so that's an old Roth. When you said Roth of fifty thousand, yes. that was okay. I gotcha. So yeah. and and but you are putting twenty five hundred to twenty eight hundred. You're rebuilding the savings account. What do you think you need to spend on an annual basis? Uh, so I would say monthly. Monthly, we're right around about seven thousand dollars. That includes the mortgage and everything. Mm-hmm. Okay, tell us about the house. Uh, so the house uh, currently is worth uh, one point two million. Wow. Um, yeah, so we, we bought it, uh, about 10 years ago, uh, for about 800,000 and the market has done pretty well in the DC area. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we have a, a low interest rate there. I don't want to mention cause Mark doesn't like to hear the low interest oh, no. rates. T- 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 tell, tell it to me. Cause I like to hear it. I want well, to uh, it's a 3.7%. 3.7. What's the outstanding mortgage amount? Uh, we owe a little over 500,000 on it. Okay. And we currently uh- contribute. A uh, couple hundred dollars extra each month. Stop we just doing that. Up. Just stop it. Stop it, okay. please. It's such a it's such a low mortgage rate, and so Wait, and and one day you you still have a, a future pension coming down the line. Is that right? Yeah, that's correct. So so when I turn fifty nine, um, my military pension for my mm-hmm. time in the military will be approximately eleven thousand dollars a year. Okay. So okay, just so we're like it's now. We're doing 15 years from now, or for, or for you, it'll be 20 years, right? Or 19 years. You will have your wife's pension, which is at the very like bare bones. Maybe it's 60. It'd probably be more than that. But 60 grand a year, you're going to have the $11,000 a year from your pension. And then will that VA pension still be there at 25 grand a year? Yes, that's correct. I, I do qualify to keep both the uh, the VA and my retirement military. Okay. So- we have no problems, obviously, because you're, I mean, you've, you're good savers and you're going to have the pension benefit. So what we really need to think about, are, it sounds to me, are two things. We need to think about the kids and their education, and we need to think about the most efficient way to save for that. My question about the kids, is there any GI Bill situation that you have like left over in your service? Uh, yep. So I, I have about two years worth of GI Bill so assuming one of the kids goes to a state school, um, mm-hmm. I did, did the paperwork uh, for that years ago. And so um, they would have about two years worth of um, that uh, GI Bill to use for school. Okay. So Mark, is Michael and are Michael and his wife saving too much into retirement um, or are they doing exactly what they should be doing? You go first. What do you think? I mean, given what he's laid out and and what their goals are in terms of possibly retiring in their 50s, I know they have the brokerage account, but that would probably be my focus, I would think, because I I need them to be able to have some money that they they can get their hands on. Right. Uh, But also, I don't know, like, what's the priority with the kids? How important is is it to you guys to actually fund college for them? Or or, or are you okay with them, you know, taking loans? What do you think? What do you think, Michael? So uh, my wife and I talked about it uh, a lot, and I think our our mindset is um, we want them to have, I guess you'd call it maybe a well-rounded life experience during college. So um, that would mean, um, you know, maybe uh, my wife and I paying for some college, uh, them also taking out uh, some student loans, mm-hmm. and then maybe the possibility of... Um, my wife and I uh, matching any money or maybe at a two for one rate uh, if they were to open up a, a Roth account and work during college or even before uh, be able to, you know, fund some of their retirement. So kind of giving them a, a, a experience investing experience in loans and then also an experience, um, you know, a of having a little bit paid for. Well, then I, I, you know, all that extra monthly cash flow that you guys have on a regular basis. I mean, I would take a good chunk of that and put it in the 529 plans. Also, whatever you're paying extra on the mortgage, put that in the 529 plans. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. So let, wait a second. We know that they have, you're going to, how, what is your goal for your savings account? When you said you had 30 grand, how much do you want to go in there? Uh, I'd say uh, about $40,000 would be enough. All right. So you're going to be done in a few months. So You know, in 2025, I agree with Mark. I think that there should be 529 accounts. It's just more efficient, right? It doesn't have to be everything, but you can take maybe some of the money from the brokerage if you want, or some of the new money going in and just, you know, you say, I got $2,500 or $2,800, whatever it is. You can put a chunk of that money into 529 plans for the kids, 
not a ton. Like you can do 500 for each kit if you want. All right. And I presume that the first two years, are the, well, maybe we'll have to see, but maybe the first two years of the GI Bill, you don't have to assign it which kid's going to get that yet, do you? Nope, not yet. Okay. So what I would focus on is more of the seven and the four-year-old, right? Because you'll have more time on your side. And I agree. I'd put a bunch of money in there and uh, and then I might split it like between the 529 and the brokerage account and do it that way. Yes. And stop putting extra money into the uh, the mortgage because is this a house you're going to hang on to, you know, for the long term, you think? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. And, you know, I guess as we kind of laid things out, you know, if my wife has about 15 more years left uh, working for the government at 52, mm -hmm. uh, you know, maybe timing it so that the house is paid off for roughly at about the same time that that she leaves full time work. Yeah. I mean, you, you won't have to worry. You're going to have so much income. It's going to be amazing. Um, I think that the answer is um, you're not saving too much. You're probably saving in the wrong accounts a little bit. You know, so if we open 529 accounts, are you amenable to that? Yes. Yeah, okay. I'm amenable to that. Okay, good. If there is any sort of incentive tax wise to use the plan that is sponsored by your municipality, do that for sure. And then I think that you guys are in really good shape. I am really interested in hearing what you think is going to happen when you are 52 and 55 years old, because I feel like, I don't know, like you sound young and, you know, life's all ahead of you. So what do you think is going to happen when it's your fifties and your sixties and your seventies, when you're still young enough to be able to do something, but also do you have an idea? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So my wife and I love international travel. So uh -huh. we would, you know, that you know, having the ability to, you know, once the kids are in college, be able to pick up and, you know, go to another country for a month or, um, you know, travel around, you know, a different uh, continent for two months or something. We love to be able to uh, to do something like that in the in between area of after, you know, full time work and then also before, you know, we actually retire. Right. Right. What's number one on the list to uh, places to travel? Yeah, I got to know. Uh, so, so my number one, uh, would be to go to, uh, Carnival in Rio de Janeiro. Oh, he's got a bucket list kind of thing going. We do. Uh, we, uh -huh, we have a, uh -huh. a bucket list of events and, uh, places to go and, and all that. So we're, we're slowly ticking them off. All uh, right. That's awesome yeah. though. Mark, do you, have you ever been to Brazil? No, but I have a good friend who's, uh, here in New York city. Who's from Brazil originally. Oh, I have been to Brazil twice. One as a family when we were younger uh, and it will um, not surprise you, but it might amuse you to learn that my father, who was a, a you know, sort of a, a options trader on the floor of the American stock exchange, I guess we must've gone in the, I must've been like the late seventies, early eighties where uh, Brazil had a, uh, a floating currency. And my father would go to the black market currency market in the morning and start trading U S dollars to help pay for the trip. <laughs> and he did say that uh, it was amazing. It was a wonderful thing that he could pay for most of the trip by doing that. I was back in Sao Paulo for a big LinkedIn event that I did. And that is really interesting. That's a, like a humongous city. It's slightly weirdly unsafe. So everyone be careful if you're traveling to uh, Brazil. Uh, I'm excited by this. Do you have your estate documents done? Uh, we do. We have our uh, wills and uh, power of attorneys and uh, all of our things, life insurance and everything is all on the books already. All right. Very good. What else can we help you with that we have not covered today? I guess maybe the only outstanding question would be uh, the contributions of my wife's uh, retirement fund. Should we drop that from 12000 down to 8000 just to the very match and then use that additional 4000 for something else? I mean, because it's going into a Roth, I'm kind of like, it's fine. You can keep it in there. I mean, if you feel like you want to really jumpstart the brokerage account, you can do just that. You can basically say, I want that extra money, that four grand, either to fund 529 and fund the brokerage account. Mark, what would you say? I would keep it in the Roth. I mean, she's got 15 more years of working. That That's a lot of Roth assets that can build up. They're going to have so much, you know, taxable income in retirement. I would keep going with the Roth. All right, Mark, you heard it. You heard it from Mark Talercio, the king of all things Roth. Michael, 
we wish you all the best and we very much hope to hear from you as you approach the bucket list items and anyone out there who is listening to this it's a very interesting story about having to have uh, having a pension plan various pension plans i think this happens to a lot of our listeners who are in the military and it gives you so many options down the line so uh, if you're looking at making a big career change that pension can really float you and you know conversely if you're in a four profit company and you're like, well, why should I go take a job at a municipality? Because these pensions are incredible. That's why. So if you've got a question or you're considering a career change, maybe one job has a pension, one doesn't, and you want us to help you compare it, go to jillonmoney.com, click the contact us button and let us know what's going on. We'd love to have you on the program. Okay. Mark Talercio is the co-host, executive producer, and king of all things web. We are distributed by Paramount Global. We drop our episodes on Tuesdays and Thursdays, so please leave us a rating and review wherever you listen. And as always, we ask you to please do something nice for someone else today. Someone needs that. Change your work, change your wealth, change your life. Thank you for listening. We'll talk to you next week. Paramount Podcasts.